Okay. So can I have everyone's attention up here now? You should have open to page 39. That is the bottom of Act 1, Scene 8. And we're going to quickly now, and it is going to be quick, we're just going to go over the main parts of Act 1, Scene 8, 9 and 10. Okay? So, the first thing that I want to highlight is down the bottom here. We've actually done most of this. This is the end of Scene 7. Can I zoom in? I can. <laughs> Look at that. How good is that? I'm so Okay. Let's now focus on no sugar. Okay. Is that your notebook? Yeah, I'm going to continue though. I'm not waiting for you. Okay. Shh. Focus back up here. Okay. Remember how last lesson we talked about there was this implication that the job of the native protector, there was the local protector and the chief protector, there was this implication that they weren't doing their job very well. They didn't protect very well. Okay? It was implied. And if you actually have a look, I think it's oh, I, earlier here in this paragraph, in this um, scene seven, we have it a few times this implication, but here is the first time that it's really directly said. Girls, shh. Okay. This is a good quote. Jimmy says, because he was in jail, he was in the Fremantle jail, right? And he says, even some of them screws are polite, not like this place. Native protector couldn't protect my dog from fleas. Okay. Now, you might choose to learn just these last five words. Okay. In, in the words of Jimmy, the native protector was useless and not able to protect my job from fleas. Yeah? Now, if you said that, you would, might consider changing my to his and putting it into these square brackets like this. His. Oops, that doesn't work very well. But you know what I mean, instead of mine. Okay? Can I keep moving? Okay. Whew. All right. Now, how many of you know that one opinion that Australians, particularly white Australians, to have is that Aboriginal people are lazy. Okay. If you ask your homestay, what do you think about Aboriginal people? Okay. You will find that a common opinion is that um, Aboriginal people are lazy. Okay. Ask your homestays. Just ask them. What's your opinion of Aboriginal people? They might say, "Oh, they, you know, we stolen generation. We took their children." But somewhere along the line, most people will get around to this belief that, "Oh, but they're really lazy. They just, you know, take the government's money and they don't really work very hard." Okay, there is an opinion. So, what I'd like to say is Davis uses this play to suggest something about Aboriginal people and this idea. Does Davis suggest that Aboriginal people are lazy? No. So Davis challenges the assumption that Aboriginal people are seen as lazy. Now it is true that they are not working in a traditional job in this play. But Davis presents that the reasons for that. Because who'd give them a job? There's this unemployment crisis. Frank Brown can't get a job and they 
Gran says something like, they, they're not slaves. Yes? Treat them like slaves. And just as an example of the fact that they are hardworking, this scene direction or stage direction at the top of scene eight, I think really indicates it well. Jimmy is mending a pair of shoes. Gran and Millie are sewing bags together. Sam enters with a bucket of water. He is exhausted. Joe's got a sugar bag slung over his back. Everyone has a job. Okay? Everyone is working together to provide a life for the family. Okay? And you'll have more examples of this. You can probably think of some. Fixing the bike, uh, trapping the rabbits, cooking the food, um, chopping the posts so that they can actually take CC in the horse and cart to hospital. Yes? That they might not have a job in the way that they're not lazy. And so Davis is challenging this opinion held by many Australians. Now, this opinion is, if you look earlier, it's actually... Um, Sergeant Carroll, I think, is the one who has the conversation. You know, you've got these boys, lazy boys, bludging off you. And Grant says, you know, who'd give them a job? They're not slaves. So he sort of refers to it. But this, um, he, he's actually challenging this assumption by showing that they are actually all working together to provide for their family. And they're supporting each other. So they're absolutely not portrayed as lazy. And he challenges and counters that assumption by many in the white community that they are lazy. Yes? So you may have a topic that refers to how Aborigines are presented in the, um, in the play. And you could discuss that Davis presents them as hardworking. He challenges the assumption that many white Australians hold that Aboriginal people are lazy by showing how they work together. For example, at scene, Act 1, Scene 8, Jimmy is mending a pair of shoes. Gran and Millie sew bags together. You, you could pick a few of these if you wanted to. All right. Does that make sense? Oh. Okay. Um, so they're the only notes I made on scene eight. Um, scene eight, Cece's ready to come home from hospital. Um, oh, there is an interesting thing up here. Jimmy's just got out of jail. The bottom of page 40. Okay. So they're going to borrow old skinny Martin's... He's a neighbour. They're going to borrow old skinny Martin's cart to bring Cece home. And Jimmy says... Yeah, go ask him and I'll solve the meat problem at the same time. I know that bastard's farm, like the back of my hand, I know where his weathers are running. Weathers are female sheep. So he says, I know where his sheep are. You go ask him for the cart and I'll go solve our meat problem. Basically, he's implying that he's going to go and steal a sheep. Okay. Jimmy's out of jail for I don't know how long, not very long, and already he is standing up against the white law. He is providing for his family, but he's, you know, he, he is not obeying the rules. Again, those rules are imposed upon him by white authority that he does not respect or recognise. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's down the bottom there. Gran says, you want to watch out, charge and catch you. he give you six months just like that. Okay. Um, and then we move on to scene nine. Scene nine is where the um, family scabies are going to move. And Dave. Millie. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Uh, no. 
Where are we? Here. Okay. So, the page 42. We've got the top of page 42. And this is Mr. First, talks about rotten with scabies. Scabies. Okay. So, as a result of, well, various submissions, it's been decided to transfer the entire native population to the Moor River settlement. And there are, to in total, 89 natives. Okay? And they've got warrants. Warrants are for arrest. Okay? Because they've got a skin disease, they're being arrested. Sergeant says, okay, we can give up looking for a new site for the reserve then. All right, remember how he's been looking for a place for the new Aboriginal reserve? This has kind of solved this problem. But Mr Neville says it's only temporary. It's temporary. Okay. Then he says it's essential that the town and shire are quite devoid. Devoid means empty. Okay. Of natives after the 17th. Now, if we come up to the top of page 43, you know, horses go, you'll have to, the lives. How long is it go until you get up and there's a new reserve? And Sergeant says, or until after the election. Okay. So Sergeant Carroll clearly knows that this is about politics and the voting. Okay. Sergeant Carroll knows the decision is about politics. Yeah? Can okay. All right, and then I think we're going to go on to scene 10. Can I keep going? Yes. Okay. So scene 10, the decision is told to the family. So, so Sergeant comes is here for, the, for all of yous. Do you all know about the word yous? Have I told you about it before? It's actually not correct English. Can you guess what it means? All of yous. It's you, plural. Okay. And you make, it makes sense, right? So apple, apples, pen, pens, you, yous. But it's really incorrect grammar. So it actually is a type of slang but it says something about the level of education. I wouldn't write about that in an essay because I think there's better things to analyse, but it's just interesting to note that the, the type of language Sergeant Carroll is speaking is an informal register. Yes? He, Millie says, what for? What have we been arrested for? We ain't done nothing. You're being transferred. Every native in Northam's going, going where? You're being transferred to the Moor River Native Settlement. Gran says, I ain't going. <laughs> All right? You know, ain't is slang. What does it mean? Yeah. I'm not going. Gran's character is really interesting. Remember last time we talked about the fact that she, um, she's the one who broke up the fight between Sam and Jimmy. Okay? So, but Gran in her own way, is as defiant as Jimmy is. And you can probably guess at why Jimmy is so defiant, because his mother is a big influence on his life. She's defiant against white authority. She says, I ain't going. And then you're all going. You're under arrest. What for? And then now Jimmy stands up. Jimmy says, yeah, you reckon black fellas are bloody mugs. Bloody mugs means stupid. Mug is a fool. 
or stupid. You reckon black fellas are stupid. The whole town knows why we're going. Because we're jealous in this town, don't want us here. Yeah? They don't want our kids at the school with their kids. And old Jimmy Mitchell. Now, I'd love to see if somebody might do some context research on Jimmy Mitchell for me. Audition, he might be James Mitchell, which I think is really cool because this is the James Mitchell Centre and this is Jimmy Mitchell, who I think is James Mitchell. Can you find out, is he the Premier of Western Australia? Election. When the country votes. Yeah? So Jimmy knows the real reason. And the constable, what the hell would you know? You don't even vote. I'm telling you, I know more about Wajella's government than you do. And what I'm telling you is the truth. Sergeant says bullshit. <laughs> Sorry, constable says bullshit. Sergeant, remember Sergeant already knows the truth because he mentioned it in the last scene or until the election. But here he says, I don't know whose idea it is. It's got nothing to do with me. And there is an idea that David hints at, and it's not necessarily that every white person is depicted as racist. Okay. There is policy that is racist, but, and, and there are, you know, people that say racist things. But I think Davis may be hinting at that this idea, got nothing to do with me, is really important. That a lot of white Australians just but could see the truth, but chose to do nothing out of protecting themselves, or possibly, you know, because out of fear of their position, if they stood up to say that's wrong, they wouldn't have a job, they wouldn't, you know. Again, how you write about that, it might not go in every essay, it probably wouldn't go, but it might be in a part about context that the implication is, and this is what I'd say, that the implication that Davis is making is not, he's not saying that every Australian, white Australian is racist, but he's implying that, that characters like Sergeant Carroll see the truth of the government policy but still choose to ignore it or do nothing. Does that make sense? Okay. And it actually is highlighted here as well because Jimmy Mitchell, Sergeant says, Jimmy Mitchell's got nothing against black fellas. And Jimmy says, no, he's got nothing against them. Not worth losing a bloody election over that if he stood up, he's got nothing against them, but if he tried to help them, he might lose an election. Okay, the implication there. He won't stand up for them. Even though he has got nothing against them, he won't stand up for them. Does that make sense? Has anyone got questions there? Bit confused. Okay, so Jimmy Mitchell, Sergeant says he's got nothing against black fellas. I mean, he, he doesn't think badly of black fellas, of Aboriginals. Jimmy says, you're right. He's got nothing against them. But yes, but he's not going to stand up for us because it's not worth losing an election, a bloody election over. If he did something to help us or stand up, he would lose the election. But he says you're wasting your time because Wajellas aren't going to vote for him because he's got all them Chinamen's working on his farm. You know what Chinamen's are? Chinese. Chinese. He's got all them Chinese working on his farm at Grass Valley and Wajellas don't like that. He's going to get rid of... This means get rid of 
He's going to get rid of the black fellas. He should get rid of them Chinamans too. Now, immigrants to Australia back in that time, Asian immigrants like Chinese, think about 1930s, probably not treated that well. Okay. The implication here is that these Aboriginal people are being moved away. They're being treated even worse, below in status even than the Chinese people, than the Chinamans. Yeah? Does that make sense? Okay. Now listen to Gran. There are Jimmy and Gran can go on the train, and Gran's I ain't going on no train. I'm going with Sam and Millie. She's eating on. Being defiant. Do you know that word? We used it. Being defiant. She's not going to comply or agree with them. Now she has to move, but she's like, I'm going to move my way. Okay? They try and persuade her. You'll get pretty hot walking, it'll take four days, you'll be better off. Sergeant, I ain't going on no train. You can put me in jail if you want to. Does she, does she want to go, uh, go by train? I think she wants... No, she wants to go with her family. She's not going to do what they tell her to do. So, um, can I say, Gwen is actually, uh, obviously want to go by train, but she, she just oh. wanted against... No, I don't know that the implication. I don't know that that implication is there. I don't think there's anything that says Graham, what Graham what really wants to do, but she is opposing them trying to control her. Even she wants to go by train. We don't know, so you can't really say she wants to go by train or not. Okay, so I wouldn't say she wants to go by train but decides not to. But I would say she is opposing their control. that make sense? you want me to write that one out? Yes. Opposing their control. Opposing the white control. The, the attitude is, you can't tell me what to do. Okay? Cool? Continue? Okay. Now, she's so strong about it, she begins to wail and cry. We know what cry is. Wail is like incredibly loud crying. No! No! Like, I'm not going by train. What are we leaving government well for? We're Jalawara Wara Mut. Oh, white people bad is the translation. <laughs> and who wins? There's a, there's a fight. Grand says, I'm not going by train. And they say, you are going by train. And finally, Sergeant says, all right, all right, Gran, you can go by road if you want to. Yeah? I am too. Yeah? So Gran is doing it, you know, Gran's doing it her way. It's your funeral if she doesn't make it. It'll be your funeral. Yes? Jimmy ends up going by train, though, you know, because of his serious heart condition. I think this might be that it's actually... Over the dog. And it's great. Again, I'm not leaving Wow Wow behind. If I can't take him, I'm not going. Who's going to look after our dogs? We'll look after them. Yeah, yeah, we know that with the police bullet. Gran is frantic. Frantic means like panicked. Is that crazy? Yeah. You're not going to shoot Wow Wow. You're not going to shoot Wow Wow. You hear me charging? I'm not going. She is frantic now. She tears her hair. So she's trying to pull her hair out. She's throwing plates and mugs around. Like, this is one scary woman. <laughs> Remember that earlier they said, I need protecting from her, all right? And Sergeant loses again. Oh, take your bloody mangy wow wow, whatever you call it. Take the bloody lot. Take all of them. You just have to be ready for tomorrow morning, okay? They're all looking on in stunned silence. They're shocked, stunned. What's happened? All right. Cool? Okay. Okay. Now.
I don't know how to use this to bring up my screen recorder.